Welcome to Black Hat. Uh, this is a TurboTalks. It's a 20-minute session. Uh, or this is a Kevin Caldwell, or Cardwell. <laughs> He's going to be talking about toolkits, uh, the all-in-one approach to security. Test. Can we hear me? Okay. How's that? Yeah. Okay, welcome. One of the things was when I actually started thinking about presenting this topic and actually sending in for call for papers, I'm getting tired of carrying laptops around. I don't know how many of you, your laptop's like a desktop now, kind of weighs about the same, right? DTR, desktop replacement. Well, you've got, I've got two laptops up here. I've carried them through seven airports in the last three weeks because I've been on travel that long. So I really learned to appreciate the toolkits because I'm getting tired of carrying these laptops around. Okay, that's what I'm talking about these toolkits. How many people use toolkits? Okay, good. Because early days, they weren't that good, but now they're getting much better. Okay, one of the things I want to do is just talk about what we're going to cover here in the agenda. Tool selection methodology, a process of taking and looking at tools and deciding which one you're going to use. Okay, it doesn't matter what tool you use as long as you have a methodology for selection. Okay. And we got two approaches, traditional and alternative. Now we're going to look at the available toolkits. Just a few, as anybody knows who's looked on the web, there's tons of toolkits out there. Okay? It doesn't matter which one you use as long as you're comfortable with it. Then I'm going to talk about the network security toolkit. Okay? To me, it has a lot of powerful features in it, and I'll talk about some of them, and we'll look at some of them. And then we'll have questions if we've got time. <coughs> okay. Having been in the security world for some time now, one of the difficult things is, is working with a tool, getting comfortable with that tool, and then the next release of it, it doesn't compile the same way. It doesn't build the same way, right? You got to learn new things about it, okay? Well, what we want to do, is, of course, is keep free tools. I like open source free things, so everything we're going to look at is free. But the tool used is not a factor if I'm comfortable with it or you're comfortable with it, okay? It equates the same way as if I've got something I want to tighten, say a bolt or something I want to tighten. Some people's going to take a socket, you know, a nice ratchet, a socket, and tighten it. Some people's going to get a wrench and tighten it. Some people will take a crescent wrench, right? It doesn't matter as long as the tool does what we want it to do. And that's what my approach is to these toolkits, looking at the different ones. As I talk about the different ones, I'm not saying one's better than the other. It depends on what you're comfortable with, okay? As long as it gets the job done, that's the main thing. Traditional approach, how many of you have ever done this? Download the tool, maybe read the README file, or just, nah, I'm going to do dot, right, forward slash configure, make, make, install. Right? We've been doing that for years and years and years. Works well, and we've been doing it a long time. That's the tradition, what I call the traditional approach. Okay? Then you run the tool. Now, how many has ever done that and then run the tool, but it didn't work? Yeah, a few of us. Yeah, that happens too because you got build dependencies and all that type of stuff. And that's what I'm talking about on the next slide. All those dependencies. Did you get all those libraries? Right? What are some of them? Open SSL, libpcap, all these different libraries you got to build to make sure that they're there when you're actually running the tool. Otherwise, when you go to run the tool, it doesn't run. So that's a problem. Okay? Once the libraries are built, is everything the right version? Okay? Anybody work with libpcap or winpcap and it's like, oh, I've got version 2.0, but my tool only works for version 3.0, okay? Those are the types of things we have to deal with. And then, are there steps to follow to get the tool running? How many people work with Nessus? I mean, it's a black hat. Most of us probably use Nessus. There's kind of a procedural steps you've got to follow to compile and build Nessus, right? You've got to get your libraries, your plugins, all that stuff built. So again, these are all challenges with the traditional approach of selecting tools. And then finally, does it work on your operating system you're using? Okay. Anybody ever do a dot slash configure, a make, make install, and then it doesn't work, and you go read the readme file because you decided to do it before the readme file, even though you probably should read the readme file first, and you look at it, and it says, this version of the BSD kernel 2.6 or whatever, you've got to add this dependency or this switch when you actually make or make install. Okay? Those are all the challenges of the traditional approach. Well, I like the alternative approach. Tools available at boot. When I boot the system, I want to be able to use the tool. Okay? 
No build, require, no, uh, build requirements, no hard drive impact. What I carry around anymore is about four CD-ROMs with different toolkits for the different jobs I'm doing for the client. Okay? A lot easier to go through airports, especially in the U.S., because every airport you go through, you've got to take your laptop out of your bag. Right? I mean, these two laptops, they got to be quite comical when I would take two laptops out of my bag, and they're like, two laptops? What are you doing with two laptops? Okay? Again, it makes it easier if you can do it all on one CD. Nice thing is, most of these tools will work on any Intel system. Okay? For those of you who have worked with Network Security Toolkit of others, they boot, they boot right off the Intel box, works fine. Okay? Then they got a web-based GUI, nice graphical interface for those of you that don't want to talk, you know, uh, type on the command line. Secure so socket layer, set up at boot. Okay? How many people tried to set up OpenSSL? That takes a little bit of work to build the program, the libraries, that type of stuff. At boot, with these toolkits, it's already working for you. Okay? And the powerful scripts, to me, is the selling point for the toolkit. Okay? I can go into any organization, boot from a CD-ROM, and have scripts that will set up any program I want in clicks of a mouse. Okay? To me, that's easy. The available toolkits, Nopix, right? The, fa the, the father of pretty much everything that's out there is Nopix. Helix, forensics-based. Okay? I don't know how many people have ever used that. We'll talk about each one of these. FLAC, anybody use FLAC? A couple of you have, right? Okay. Auditor is probably one of the most popular ones. Yep, we'll talk about that. And in the Network Security Toolkit, what I really like about that is the scripting. And that's what I'm going to focus on at the end. Hardware friendly, right? Lots of choices. There's a URL for you. Local Area Security is actually a Nopix distribution by Kyle Rankin. Has anybody read that book, Nopix Hacks? Yeah, several of you have. Great book. Has a lot of information in there. You can build your own toolkit CD. Take it with you, master it, have everything you want on the road with you. Then Helix is incident response and forensics, okay? Supposedly forensically sound. The art of defiling at the end of the day, that talk will probably make you decide, well, nothing's forensically sound anymore, okay? Because there's some techniques coming out that can you know, throw that out the window. But SANS and others use Helix for their courses, for their training courses and things like that. Anybody use Helix? Yeah, a few of you. Yep. Helix is pretty good. There's a URL for that. And then FLAC is actually, it's a hacker kit. That's really what FLAC is. Okay? Hackers Linux Assault Kit. Morphix is the derivative of Morphix, and it's a powerful tool to do hacking with. There's no doubt about it. It has a lot of things that you can do to hack. Then Auditor, there's actually a book coming out in the open source secu uh, security series either this month or next month about penetration testing using Auditor. Okay. I've seen several use an auditor here. It's a great tool. Auditor has a lot of things on it. It's very big. It's 600 plus megabytes, so that might be a concern for you. But it's broken down into areas. Scanning, footprinting, all those different things. And one of the things I like the best about auditor is getting wireless to work. Okay. At boot, wireless works very well under auditor. Anybody had any challenges getting wireless to work under some of these Linux tools? Yeah, there we go. I've got that challenge today because these are two new laptops and my wireless card doesn't want to play with the Black Hat access point. It will under Windows, but not under Linux. So again, that's some of the challenges you have to deal with. Okay? Tutorials. Anybody read any of these tutorials? Wow, I don't see anybody. Go look at these tutorials. It will tell you in detail how to do a secure socket layer, man in the middle attack, and still credentials over an HTTP, HTTPS secure socket layer tunnel. It actually shows you in detail in the tutorial exactly how to do it. Okay? Because it's actually one of those tutorials you can watch and they show you as they click and everything they do, what they do. Point and click methodology. Okay? Very easy to use. Then my favorite, Network Security Toolkit. This came about because I was trying to do something to find a tool that I could take with me that would boot on the majority of the platforms. Because as you see, if you read my bio, I worked a lot with the Department of Defense. And we would go into these organizations where they say, well, you can't take your laptop in. Right? Anybody got organizations like that? Won't let you take your laptop in? Okay. So to get around that, I actually created my own CD. And I would take that in and say, well, just give me a desktop to work from, boot from the CD, and do my work off of that. Right? That's the easy way to do it with the toolkits. Well, I was trying to build one that would work on virtually any Intel platform. And I got busy with all of these other projects, that type of stuff, and 
one day I was on the internet and I saw this link that said the top 75 open source security tools. Right? Anybody ever seen that list on insecure.org? Yeah. And there was a link on there to the network security toolkit that has the majority of the top 75 open source security tools. So I clicked on the link, downloaded it, and started playing with it. Okay? Here's who it's created by. I won't go through that slide too much, but it's a toolkit that is under GPL, but the scripts are what is actually the power of it. Okay? It's Fedora Core 2. If anybody used it like last year, it was Red Hat 9. Went from Red Hat 9 to Fedora Core 2. It boots from an ISO CD image that works virtually on all 86 architectures that I found, about 99%. Okay? Creates a RAM disk, more RAM the better. Of course, when you're booting off a CD, you got to mount somewhere, so you're mounting in memory. So I usually like to run it with a gigabit, gigabyte of RAM. That works very well. Okay? X windows are hit or miss. And X windows is kind of that anytime you try to start X windows. But they've got a good script for it. LXVWTM will go in and it tries to configure guess what your video card is, guess what your display is. If it can't do it, it will use defaults and see if it can bring it up. Okay? If it doesn't bring it up, you run Setup X, and I've had it run every time I've ever run Setup X, I've got X windows to run on any machine. Okay? By default, VWTM might not run on your machine. And I already talked about that, but Edercat, man in the middle attack, secure socket layer sniffing. They're available at the click of a mouse. Click the mouse, Edercat comes up, says select the host, select target, boom, inject art poisoning, man in the middle attack. That easy. Okay? Nessus, of course, we've already talked about Kismet. It's on there. Tons of tools on this thing. <coughs> Probably my favorite thing of it is snort and two mouse clicks. How many of you configured snort before? Can you get it in two mouse clicks? Probably not. It takes a little bit of work. Well, Paul and the uh, creators of Network Security Toolkit have written a script that will bring up Snort. You click on the ox, I'll show you in the demo. You click on the Snort link, starts the daemon, right? The daemon starts running, Snort's up. The next click is to bring up an interface to it, either base, right? The replacement of acid, because we used to have acid, but now we have base, or Snorter, the Snorter interface too. And I'll look at those. But I've never seen an easier Snort setup. Not even in the Snort, and it's a good book, the Snort 2.0, 2.1 second edition out there by Jay Bill et al. and company, several other people. But even their Snort setup is not as easy as the script that runs on this toolkit. Okay? The user guide has tons of information in it on how to run the different tools, the different scripts. Because everything's scripted through a web-based interface. Simple. Insert the CD-ROM, boot the system. Okay? During the boot, if you want a prompt, you can uh, press the space bar, and then you can actually custom the boot. Laptop, desktop, whatever type you want to do. If you don't have DHCP running, you can set all that up. And this is Black Hat, so I'm not going to go through too much of setting up the if config and that type of stuff. One thing it does now is during boot, it will set and prompt you for a password. Anybody know why that is? What do you think? Anybody attach this to your machine? Yeah, thanks for that. And what actually happened was they shipped all these, you know, people downloaded and burned the image and created it, but it had a default password of NST at 2003. That was actually the default password. Guess how many people set the thing up on the internet and never changed the default password? So everybody's out there looking, hmm, host name probe. Probe is the host name of the NST. Hmm, let me try root NST at 2003. Boom, it was in the box. Okay. So they actually put in the script now where you actually have to set the password every time you boot it. It can become annoying, so you might want to look at a USB boot with it to actually get your configuration files and things like that. Okay. When X starts, right click on the desktop, select desktop applications, you got Firefox. Right? Firefox there. Once Firefox comes up, it'll actually give you a username, password, login, where you're logging in actually to the web user interface for the toolkit. Okay? That's local on the local machine. What I really like about it, though, is you can actually set it up via HTTPS, not HTTP. Why? HTTP is in clear text. It's not going to let you authenticate. You have to go to port 443 HTTPS. Now, what I used to do is I would take this CD into an organization, get my desktop that they would set me up with, put the CD-ROM in, boot it, go out to the Internet, if they allow HTTPS in, 
They better filter it by IP address to the web server. A lot of them don't. And then I would HTTPS in, kick off my scanners or whatever, and pick up usernames and passwords and give it to them in my audit report. Okay? It's that easy to do because how many of you disable the CD-ROM boot? Some of you do. You should. Never let that CD-ROM boot. And what do we got now? We got the little USB drives. Don't allow that drive to create either because when you stick it in, it creates a drive. Now I'm giving people access into your network. Okay? One of the things is when you bring in and you decide you're going to allow port 80 and port 443, you need to actually filter it down to the level of who's allowed access to what machine. So hopefully at least you're doing that. Okay, before we get any questions, okay, there's the web user interface, okay? Web user interface has all your tools, tons of tools. I mean, you go look at the user manual, those types of things, you've got lots of tools. VNC, anybody use VNC? Yeah, it's got a VNC server where you can click on that VNC link there. You can start your VNC server, log into it, do your applications, do the different things you want to do. Here I said snort. Here's the one click. Snort, show a variety of those types of things, right? Snort setup in progress. Now if I go to base, there's a base actually showing me a full-blown intrusion detection. I already did the port scan to save time today, but a full-blown intrusion detection system in two clicks. That's all it takes. You click snort, you click up the base interface for snort, you're there. Okay? And if you go into snorter, there's your snorter interface. Anybody ever used snorter before? Color coded, right? Red's high alert, orange is yellow, whatever you want to call it is medium, and blue is low. Okay? All that's set up with that two clicks of the mouse. That's all it takes to have this toolkit up and running. So I can go into any organization, just carry my little CD, boot from the CD, and I've only, I got the entire network from the inside unless they've got a lot of extra precautions in there. And everybody says, well, yeah, but you can't sniff on a switch. Well, we all know about Mac flood and art poisoning and all that type of stuff. Yes, I can sniff on a switch. Right? Again, all I'm trying to show you in this 20 minutes was the toolkits are out there. Download them, get them, play with them, have fun with them. In fact, I woke up at 5 o'clock this morning because last night, you know, we all were at the reception having a few drinks, stuff like that. And I woke up at 5 o'clock because last night somebody asked me the question, can you install it to the hard drive? And I was like, well, yeah, you can. But, I, you know, and then I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning because I'd never done it. So I said, well, before the talk, I'm going to try it. Well, 5 o'clock in the morning is probably not the best time to be trying this. But I actually did install it. This is on the hard drive now. I took it off the CD this morning and installed it on the hard drive. Took about 15 minutes to download the files. Took about three minutes to read the README on the hard drive installation. And now it's actually full blown on the hard drive. Okay? Another thing I would recommend you do is take your hard drives, partition them. You've got Network Security Toolkit. Auditor is a great one. Make a partition for Auditor. Make a partition for Helix. Flat, whatever you want. Boot. Depending on what job you're doing for the client, go in there onto that partition, boot that security toolkit, and you've got that suite of tools available right there at the box. No configuration required. You saw how hard the configuration was. Click on the actual link, starts the tool, and away it goes. I didn't think. Any questions? Yes? Yes, it does have a USB boot option. I haven't used it yet. It's kind of like the hard drive install. Because for me, until I started thinking about putting it on a hard drive, the beauty of it was carrying the CDs around. All I had to do was carry three or four CDs into the client, and I could do anything I wanted, from a forensics investigation to penetration testing to auditing, everything I want, just carrying CDs. Okay? Any other questions? Yes? I haven't played with it on a multi-boot DVD. If you go read the, uh, if you go to networksecuritytoolkit.org where the tool's at, and you go read the forum, the actual listing there, the, a lot of guys have done a lot of playing with it. Yeah, but no, I've never actually done that. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, um, 
Yeah, updates is one of the concerns because I'm actually, the demo I'm doing is 1.2.1 because 1.2.2 came out, but it actually has a finicky thing with Nessus. I didn't demo Nessus here because it just wasn't enough time, so I didn't do it. But they're pretty good with updates, but if you go read their website, they're like, they're looking for help. So if anybody's coders and want to help them, they, you know, they're looking for help all the time. But yeah, they're okay. I mean, all the toolkits kind of one thing is the update function is that's one of the new things that they're still working on. And if you go actually to the Network Security Toolkit, it will update itself. You can go in there and click on it, update the tool, and it'll update all your files. Yeah, remastering instructions. Uh, Kyle Rankin's Nopix Hacks books, great for that. Shows you how to remaster and set up the tools as you want them. Customize them. That's what I do. I remaster and set up my own toolkits. Yep. What's that? Yes, yeah. When you install it to the hard drive, you can update it, different things. One thing I found out this morning at about 6 o'clock, because my Nessus scan crashed everything I had, well, when you do a hard drive install, you got to go in there and tell it to use the hard drive, the script to use the hard drive, because they developed it for CD-ROMs. So I was using RAM, and I was doing all these installs, and I just crashed everything this morning about 6. So I had to go read their FAQ, got the answer to the question, didn't take that long to fix it. Any other questions? Again, get the toolkit. It's a great toolkit to have. Yes? I'm not familiar with Data Snorter. How about ACID? Can you customize the Snort? Yeah, the question is can you customize Snort? Everything you can do with the normal tool and utility, you can do with the Network Security Toolkit. You just got to go in and config files and change them around. Yeah. It, it, it actually is very flexible for that. Of course, I didn't have time in a 20 minute talk to do that, but you just if you read their uh, user manual or the FAQ, because they got a great FAQ database there, it'll tell you how to do all those different types of things. Okay. Any other questions? Yes? Yeah, Wapix and Pentu are uh, two others that are pretty good. Yeah, yeah, good. Thanks for that. Nopix and Wintu? Wapix, which is actually wax now. Oh, Wapix is wax? Again, like I said during the presentation, any tool, as long as it does the job for you, is all that matters. Okay. I use Auditor too. I use Helix. I use a lot of these tools. But the scripting for somebody who doesn't want to sit there and spend hours on getting these build the, the libraries to make, to compile, all that type of stuff, the dependencies, to me, the Network Security Toolkit is the best one for that because, as you saw, two clicks and snorts up. And that was just SuperScan. Anybody ever use SuperScan? That's just a little SuperScan I did this morning to give for the demo. I mean, Tools ancient, SuperScan, Foundstone, I mean, it's a long time ago. It still works. Still does a nice little port scan to give you alerts on your IDS, stuff like that. Any other questions? Yes? No, the question is, have I used them in VMware? No, and this morning I thought, well, I could bring up my VMware and try to do that, but at 6 o'clock in the morning I said, no, I just want to make sure it works from the hard drive and done it. So, no, I haven't tried it in VMware. I would think it wouldn't be a problem, but I haven't tried it. Kismet and stuff problem? Yeah, I haven't played with it that much. No. I use VMware for a lot of other things, but not with my toolkits. Any other questions? We got time for one more, or is there one more? Last call. I don't see a hand. Thank you very much. <laughs>